Today on Tabletop News. Mistborn and Stormlight are coming to your tabletop. We what? That's so exciting. I know. <laughs> oh, sorry. Disney's Lorcana has some meta-changing new cards. And Hasbro announces the winners of their Women Innovators of Play Challenge. All that and more on your official stop for all things tabletop. I'm Ron Ogden. And I'm the one and only Gisela Blue Gant. This is Tabletop News. Let's, Let's roll. roll. Before we get going, we just want to say thank you to today's episode sponsor, Arcane Wonders, publishers of Onitama, Furnace, World Wonders, and more. Rise of the Floodboard is the new set from Disney Lorcana by Ravensburger that will be released in full December 2nd. Already available at your friendly local game store, the set has already shown its influence on Lorcana's style of competitive gameplay. Rise of the Floodborn is Lorcana's first set since the game's initial release and introduces a new keyboard, or game mechanic, to the TCG called Resist, which indicates how much additional damage characters are able to withstand. Disney Lorcana launched in August of 2023 with just a handful of starter decks, and now Rise of the Floodborn offers more with two new decks in the combination of Amethyst and Steel, as well as the combination of Amber and Sapphire. Each deck will come with 60 ready-to-play cards and are newcomer friendly. But collectors may also want to grab these cards for foil treatments and potential to build decks in the future. Competitive players will be happy to know that Rise of the Floodborne offers more than 200 new cards and an unlikely hero with serious card draw potential in Hiram Flavorsham. Isn't he just a mouse? You're surprised that Disney has a powerful mouse? Touche. Watch out as competitive Lorcana decks may have become a lot stronger at your local game store with cards like Lady Tremaine, Imperious Queen, that upon entering play, forces opponents to banish one of their characters. However you play, it's all in the name of good, combative fun, with characters we all know and love. Except Lady Tremaine. Yeah, maybe not her. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to butter some bread with you tonight. <laughs> uh, Giselle? Sorry, uh, Boyfriend Dungeon, the smash hit video game released in 2021, where players can romance and date a weapon that turns into a human, is getting its own tabletop version out just before the end of this year. Are you dating that butter knife? It's the best relationship I've ever had. Okay then, uh, designer Maso Perez in coordination with Kit Fox Games, creators of the original video game, will launch Boyfriend Dungeon Life on the Edge, which allows up to four players plus a master of ceremonies. Role play as your favorite weapon slash person in this queer friendly adventure that includes printable PDFs for its core rulebook, a one-shot guide, and character sheet templates for each of the six weapon types, which are similar to classes. <laughs> Don't worry, baby, none of them can do what you do. What mayonnaise tonight? You're wild. <laughs> wow. Life on the Edge is its own system based on Rhapsody of Blood and powered by the Apocalypse, but player mods are welcome with open arms, as all you need to bring are six-sided dice and your imagination. Maso Perez and Kit Fox Games aim to create an ideal storytelling experience in the world of Boyfriend Dungeon's hack and slash environment, with flexibility for those who crave something in a more fantastical setting. That means I could probably create a character for my sweet little thing right here. <laughs> With Life on the Edge, wield your friends, defeat your enemies, and level up your love around the table. Crazy. <laughs> let's, um, let's move on to Creator's Corner, shall we? This week, we meet with three exciting creators who combine their love of board games with TikTok to make content their own way. Today's Creator's Corner is brought to you by Hero Forge, makers of custom miniatures. Give the gift of a custom miniature this holiday season. Hero Forge's gift cards are easy to redeem and are delivered instantly to your email. Gift cards are usable on physical miniatures, STLs, and digital miniatures. Go to HeroForge.com today. Started TikTok during the start of COVID. Some of the videos just dancing around, making skits and things like that. And then from there, worked into overviews and game previews and things like that. I try to really show a wide variety and lately I've been kind of playing different games with my kids as well. So that's been a lot of fun. Our content pretty much hovers around two player games. We got into gaming Basically right when we met, we realized we were both competitive. We had a lot of fun doing it. When we kind of found like our collection of two player games, we're like, let's share it with the world. We didn't really expect it to go to where it is today, but we're really happy that it did. I think the biggest thing that we hope people take away from our channel is that 
Quality time is so important. And in today's world, it's always so difficult to try to find the next new thing. What can we do together, especially for couples? My TikTok channel is primarily focused on gaming, but also like, you're gonna see my day-to-day -day life. You're going to see the things I do outside of my day job. You're gonna see the things I do on the weekend. Like my family loves playing games with me and I want them to be included with that. For TikTok and, and the audiences on there, I think that's been um, very cool. You know, the reach of what TikTok can do and you know, around Christmas time right now, people looking for gifts and that's where I just think it's, it's so valuable. TikTok ultimately allows you to express yourself and be creative without having to have that filter. We're able to be ourselves. We have tried to be authentic from the beginning. And so I think TikTok picks up on that, which is good. I think um, the best piece of advice we could probably give is to find something unique, something that you're passionate about. The best piece of advice that we can give is just to be authentic to yourself and find something like Chris said that only you bring to the table. Make content for you. Don't make content because you are trying to chase the numbers. Just start doing it. Show the games that you love, that you enjoy, and I think that will come, come across in the videos and, and, and your content. We're zooming, we're enhancing, we're hacking into the mainframe. <laughs> the cyberpunk future is now as tabletop gaming enters the age of augmented reality. Cobalt Press is partnering with Mirascape to add Tales of the Valley into Mirascape's Arcana platform, which uses your mobile device to turn your tabletop into a virtual 3D experience with augmented reality. Zoom in, enhance. What are you doing? I'm hacking the tabletop with augmented reality. That's not how it works. It's how it works for me. Okay. Enhance. Okay. Tales of the Valiant is Cobalt Press's trademark addition to their Black Flag rule set. It is scheduled for release in the first quarter of 2024 after extensive community playtesting earlier this year. It's published using the system reference document 5.1, released in the Creative Commons by Wizards of the Coast in early 2023. Bringing Tales of the Valley into Mirrorscape means that players and GMs will be able to interact with digital representations of miniatures, terrain, monsters, and more. Using a tablet or a mobile phone, players can see their games through the character's perspective in an augmented reality landscape. Zoom in. Oh. Zoom in in the hands. <laughs> players can also keep track of dice rolls, game information, Information and character stats, all using Mirascape's digital tools. A saved game can be loaded anytime and anywhere using a table space at hand. <laughs> Mirascape is in open beta right now. They're also developing Mirascape for compatibility on AR glasses and headsets in a bid to create a hands-free experience with enhanced hand-eye tracking for everyone at the table. We got a heck of a lot more show to go, but first, let us take you on a journey through the collection of this week's episode sponsor, Arcane Wonders. Imagine a world of endless tabletop adventures. Games that take you on a journey into fantasy realms, ancient cities, and across the galaxy. Experience the award-winning Arcane Wonders. A perfect gaming library for your way of life. From tactical games like Mage Wars to city builders like World Wonders and Foundations of Rome to engine building games like Furnace, where you build and acquire companies, extract and process resources. No other gaming collection gives you the feeling like Arcane Wonders. Oh. Uncover and explore new planets in Age of Wonders, Planetfall, or take a breath and create harmony in Neotopia, a competitive fast-paced tile placement pattern building game. The hits don't stop there. Journey to the ancient mist-shrouded shrines of Onatama as you harness animal spirits to traverse the board and manipulate the field of battle to your advantage. But wait, there's more. Start your collection today and choose from a wide array of titles, including the Dice Tower Essentials line. Pick up your web browser today and order your next tabletop game at arcanewonders.com. Order now. Pop quiz, Giselle. Oh no. Before making D&D, what was Gary Gygax's profession? He was a shoe cobbler. Wow, you got that right. It was on the prompter. Doesn't matter how you know. To honor his father's memory, Luke Gygax has started a line of D&D inspired shoes from his gamer lifestyle brand, G20. 
The shoes feature artwork from creator designer Tyler Haas Haasstedler, who created Firewalk Shoe. Whoa, those are dragon shoes. Literally. Imagine walking down the street and everyone around me having to save against fear. It's a good thing I'm a paladin. There and you from go. legendary fantasy artist Errol Otis, who created the elf and eye shoe. Each pair will come with a thank you note from Luke talking about the shoe designer and their artwork. There are high top and low top versions of each canvas shoe. They're currently print on demand on the website. Plus, Luke will have pairs with him at conventions Ooh. to check out in person. From shoes to the screen, role playing has had quite the week. Joseph Johnson is here to break down our top moments from actual play in this week's Fantasy 4. Welcome to Fantasy 4. I'm Joseph Johnson. We are going to fight our way through four rounds of our favorite moments from actual play shows. Contender number one is Welcome to Cherry Hill, where we find out what happens when the Mothman gets a hold of your phone. He starts running off into the woods, and then he stops, and he looks <laughs> back. Like he's beckoning you to follow him. Oh, Did I he take him. my phone? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, we have to follow him now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now we got no oh, choice. Like, you have no choice. <laughs> Mothman's in the group text now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Mothman is asking what we're doing for lunch today. Mothman is what I have Nathan as in my phone. Yeah, so uh, what are you thinking about lunch? Uh, let's try that vegan lasagna. You got it. Mm hmm. It's good. Trust me. Our next fighter is a clip from Science and Sorcery, where the heroes always fight with honor and wait their turn. When you said you took turns, do you mean the four of you took turns killing the guy? Oh no, only Blurter killed them. But just, you know, it was just going at this rhythm. It almost felt like we were going in rounds or something. We should have yeah, been. It's a, it's a really strange part of our combat is that we all need to take turns in a six second rotation. Oh, I'm waiting my turn. Are uh, Ron and Giselle done yet? We've been done for a while. You're the only one doing this segment, so come on, hurry up so we can get back to telling more news. So does that mean you're passing the turn? Yes, I'm passing my turn. <laughs> That's how we gotta do it sometimes. Before we get into our next Fantasy Four clip, let's hear a little from our sponsor. Today's Fantasy Four is brought to you by Opal Grove Games, Detroit's friendly local game store. Opal Grove Games is dedicated to building trust and community with workshops and open game nights. They believe everyone should have a safe and fun time playing the games they love. Use code Tabletop News for a 15% discount on your first order online at opalgrovegames.com. Next up, we have the team at Transplanter with GM Connie giving an Oscar-worthy performance in describing a moon coming crashing down of grasping flames surging upward toward the sky and a whip of fire coils around one of the two moons then wrenches it out of the sky. The moon slams down through the clouds, the thrash, the tangle, the sink, the drown, down, down, down through the branches and vines and leaves and thorns ripping a hole through the old growth wood the size of a chasm. That felt too real. Anybody want to go outside and make sure that that didn't really happen? Look, I play Zelda. I know that moon, scary moon. We made it to our final challenge. Faster, purple, worm, kill, kill is a show where low level adventurers face high level monsters. In this clip, it takes a moment for special guest Abraham Ben Ruby to figure out just how bad things have gotten for his unfortunate robe. Six blades, right? So that means six cuts. That's nine <laughs> pieces. Nine pieces of me get blasted away. <laughs> All right. Nine, nine handsome pieces. Nine handsome oh. pieces. Well, don't worry. I'm sure his companions bravely stood at the ground and avenged his gruesome death. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hold, hold on, hold on. I'm getting, a, I'm getting an update from the battle. Uh huh. Oh, oh. You know what? Um, um, the fight in life may not be for me. Uh, Ron and Giselle, I, I'm, 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 get out of here. I'm gonna get out of here. This bath my equilibrium. Uh, uh, back, back to you. And we're back from the world of actual play to the world of books. Hugo and Whitney award-winning author Brandon Sanderson's books are coming to tabletop. Oh, cool. Which ones? Like El Antris, the Mistborn series era one, the Mistborn series era two, Stormlight yeah. Archive series, or Warbreaker? Wow, he's prolific. <laughs> the last three of the Wheel of Time series. Uh, that would be a Brandon Sanderson expansion to a Robert Jordan game. No, 
At this year's Dragonsteel Con, they announced a Mistborn deck building game, more details on the upcoming Stormlight Archive TTRPG, and teased a card game called The Shards of Creation. Ah, the godlike beings behind Sanderson's Cosmere. The Cosmere is the fictional universe most of his books are set in. The games will be released by Brotherwise Games, makers of Boss Monster and Call to Adventure. Like in Mistborn, the shards give them elementic powers, meaning the characters drink flakes of metal to burn in their bellies to use their abilities. That's nice. In the card game version of Mistborn, designed by John D. Clare, you play as one of the iconic characters and burn medals to unlock your powers. And in the Stormlight Archive, the shards are Cultivation, Honor, Odium, which are- uh, Ron, Ron, I, I love this, but we have to keep this moving. Right. You did your knife thing, but it's fine. <laughs> The Stormlight Archive TTRPG is a D20-based game with an added twist. For risky or dramatic roles, you roll an extra D6 for potential complications or opportunities. I cannot wait. When do these come out? Next year, Mistborn comes to retailers, while Stormlight will start a Kickstarter campaign for a digital release. In 2025, a hardcover version of Stormlight will be released along with the Shards of Creation game. While we wait to see what Vin does in Scadriel, let's see what's going on here on Earth. A very familiar name, Hasbro, celebrates women in gaming by announcing the winners of their Women Innovators of Play Challenge, which asks participants to submit an original design judged on merits of fun, marketability, and of course, innovation. Four women take the honor of Women Innovators of Play in Ellie Dix, Sandra Harewood, and Mandy and Maggie Goddard. Ellie Dix from Great Britain is the owner of The Dark Imp, a family board game publisher, and the author of the book, The Board Game Family. While she's always working on games, Ellie also loves to do silly accents and sing. I'll do I. That's excellent, Ron. Thank you. Sandra Harewood, also from across the pond, presented an earlier prototype of her family board game at the White House. Oh. Sandra is a Women in Games ambassador for the UK and created the board game Raid. Finally, it's all in the family. Mother Mandy and daughter Maggie Goddard from Carmel, Indiana, are co-inventors <laughs> of a preschool game they submitted to Hasbro for review. Mandy, a project manager, and Maggie, only six years old, loves to come up with new game ideas while playing with her family. The winners of Hasbro's Women Innovators of Play received $10,000, a trip to Hasbro's headquarters in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, and a mentorship with one of Hasbro's top women leaders. It's great to see big names in gaming acknowledging innovators everywhere. So shout out to the Trailblazers, the Pioneers, and the folks looking out. Also, shout out to the people doing silly accents like this one. Really great, Giselle, really great. Now it's time to turn our attention to you. That's right, it's time for News, news from, from Your, your table. table, where we share the news from your game. This week's News from Your Table comes from NYC Zombie, and they report, the party was forced into the nine hells to recover a missing wedding officiant. Oh, I love weddings. While there, they were tasked with investigating the area and seeing if they could dig up any dirt on the happenings of hell. They entered the Boneyard, a palace of all delights, where they encountered several monstrous patrons, including a slug devil absorbing steaks at a multi-dimensional buffet. Oh, I love multi-dimensional buffets. A hag throwing back pints of whiskey. I feel seen, Jesus. <laughs> and a minotaur drinking dark roasted souls while reading a tiny book on the best ways and practices of torturing gnomes and halflings. Oh, I love- Rondo. I was gonna say tiny books. We were. I was. Two players loved it and had a great time, and the other three were traumatized. I consider that a mission well accomplished. As I well know, there's nothing quite like traumatizing players, oh. but in a family-friendly kind of way. Of course. Not in a shadowy government agents put a bag over your head, and the next thing you know, you're in the basement of a secret facility 30 miles off the Pacific coast. No hope for escape except to overpower your captors and fight tooth and nail to reach the surface, only to find that a tropical storm has made swimming to safety a hopeless idea kind of way. Well? And that's the news from your table. Send us the news from your games using hashtag news from your table on the app formerly known as Twitter. And you just might end up in our next story. We got to talk. Yeah, we do. Thanks to Arcane Wonders for sponsoring today's episode. You can find their many games at arcanewonders.com. That's it for the news this week. Thanks for watching Tabletop News, your official stop for all things tabletop. Be sure to check out our website where we have tons of discount codes and deals from our sponsors. Catch new episodes of Tabletop News Thursdays on YouTube. Don't forget to ring that bell, like, and subscribe. Let us know in the comments which story was your favorite this week, and let us know what you want to see on the show. 
I'm Ron. And I'm Giselle. See you, See you next, next week. week.